This program is made possible by the American College of Phlebology Foundation. We have so much more understanding of why veins get into trouble. We have technologies and different techniques that let us treat patients better than ever before. And with the tremendous amount of research that's going on, in years to come, phlebologists will have even more to offer the millions of patients who suffer in so many ways from their vein conditions. Welcome back. Here with us today, we have Dr. Steve Zimmett, who's a dermatologist, but all of these gentlemen are phlebologists. They all have a tremendous amount of experience treating patients with vein disorders, and I know that they have the answers to all the questions that you're wondering about. I thought we would just start with a question that I get asked very commonly by my patients. We've been talking about closing veins, taking veins out, <coughs> and I don't know about you, Steve, but a lot of my patients ask, can I keep having vein treatments? Am I ever going to run out of veins? You know, I think you're right. That's a very, very common question. Virtually everybody asks that question. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think for people who have spider and varicose veins, which are the dilated superficial system veins, uh, I think the answer is this, that those veins are, are dysfunctional. The blood is pooling in those veins, which one is causing the bulge and usually the cause of their symptoms. So I, I think it's clear that if you treat those veins, their venous circulation is going to do better. There's a lot of redundancy and capacity in the vein system, and so the, the answer is that no, they will not run out of veins. They won't run out of veins. And when patients ask, well, if you treat my veins, what's that going to do to my circulation? What's your answer for that? I, I think it's going to improve their circulation because the venous return from the legs back up to the heart is going to be more efficient. So we really never have too few veins, and I know that our patients think that they have too many veins. Um, so, so that's really a good explanation that I think would put everyone's mind at ease who's about to have a vein treatment. Now, do we have any questions from our studio audience? The woman in the back with the gray. I have an uncle who has had a wound on the inside of his leg, mm. just above the ankle, and he's had it for, I would say, almost a year. And is that something that he can go to a phlebologist to help with healing that wound? I'm really glad you brought that up because for so many years, people thought that those leg ulcers were the, the result of a blood clot and there was nothing we could really do about that. But Steve, would you like to talk about the, the way that we evaluate and treat those leg ulcers? Sure, I, I think certainly there can be a number of causes that are not venous for those kind of leg ulcers. But it's also clear that uh, a vein origin is probably the most common cause. And when you see that, in most cases, by doing an ultrasound and a proper history and physical, you can determine the underlying cause, which is usually something that can be improved or corrected with treatment. Mm. So the answer to your question is a resounding yes. Um, the, the phlebologist can decide who, the, who he should see next. Okay. And what about the patients who really aren't very symptomatic? They don't have a lot of leg aching. They don't have a lot of vein, a, a lot of... Um, pain in their legs. Um, what kinds of problems can patients of ours develop over the years? Well, if they are currently not symptomatic, uh, I think that uh, they may have cosmetic issues, which may impact their quality of life. And over time, though, their venous disease will tend to get worse. And that may show up as larger, more extensive veins. They may begin to develop symptoms uh, of heaviness, aching, leg fatigue, or signs of venous insufficiency, which might be swelling or discoloration. So it's a progression over time. And I think if they elect not to have treatment now, they're advised to do conservative measures. And at some point, uh, they may uh, find that there's an indication to do treatment based on progression of their mm. disease. Right, and the progression that we're talking about is discoloration of the ankle and change in the texture of the skin. That's right. That's a, that's a really great topic, and we're going to get back to that, but I see that we have another question from, uh, from our audience. 
I want to thank you all for giving this great information. It's answering a lot of my questions. Great. But my question is, my father had terrible varicose veins that he had stripped many years ago. Is that the best way to treat my bulging varicose veins? You know, I'm really glad that you asked that. And, and we all know that for many years, vein stripping was the best thing that we had to offer. Um, but that's no longer the case. What do you think, Steve? Well, you know, Helene, I, I, think that, uh, uh, I think that's true, that people who know about vein stripping don't want it. But I get the other question, which is, isn't vein stripping going to be better for me in the long run? Why don't I have better long-term results? And I think the somewhat surprising answer to that is probably no, that's not the case. Uh, even though it's a more aggressive, invasive procedure, these minimally invasive techniques not only are easier to recover from, less risk, less expense, um, but there probably is as good or better long-term results. Well, well then I have a question study. about parents. Is there a genetic propensity for the development of spider veins? I have a lot of spider veins, but I know my mother did not have spider veins, but I don't know about the women in particular in my father's side of the family. That's a great question. Steve, would you like to talk about heredity? Sure. I mean, I think that's probably the single most significant factor in the cause of veins, and it can be maternal or paternal, could skip a generation. So I think that's very, very common. So I'd like to thank my terrific panel and Dr. Steve Zimmett for answering these really interesting and compelling questions. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you. We'll be right back. Bye.